What's going on everyone, this is Dom, and today we're talking about my first 48 hours with the iPhone 11 Pro Max. And I gotta say, this thing is pretty damn phenomenal. So let's talk about some of the things that I really, really like about the iPhone 11 Pro. First off, we're gonna jump into camera because that is a big one for me anyways, and I'm assuming for a lot of people out there that buy iPhones because typically speaking, they have some pretty darn good cameras on them. So admittedly, when I first saw this triple camera set up in the renders and stuff like that, like everybody, you just always think, oh man, this thing looks terrible. But once you get it in hand, this trifecta, this little square right here actually looks pretty nice. I, I think they did a pretty good job making it look clean and balanced. Now I can't say the same thing for the iPhone 11 because it still just looks a little weird having the same square but only two lenses on one side. Anyway, that's a different topic for a different video. But the camera performance on this is pretty awesome. Now, one thing I do wanna address on the back of the iPhone 11 Pro is that ultra wide angle lens because that thing is freaking awesome. And before all the Android people jump on me, I know I've used wide, ultra wide angle lenses on other smartphones before too, and I like them just as much, but I just think it's nice to see iPhone have one of these. Now, it's not the greatest camera in all conditions. Like definitely by no means is the ultra wide angle lens one you should use all the time, but it does have very specific, awesome uses, might I add. And uh, one of those is video. The one thing that I do like about the wide angle lens on the back of the iPhone 11 Pro Max or the Pro is just that I'm like, I'm literally holding this maybe a foot and a half away from my face and you can see the whole environment. And I don't have to use like a special lens or anything like that. I can just bring my iPhone with me. I don't even have to use a front facing camera because I know that it's facing me, but I'm all in the shot. I don't have to worry about framing. Now, obviously, like I said, it's not the best in all conditions and definitely one of those conditions it's not the best in is when it comes to low light performance, especially for video. Now you can see that the wide angle doesn't really do very well in low light and that's because well i mean the aperture is f 2.4 and it's not not the greatest but once you step into some light it actually works out okay so i'm a big fan of the wide angle lens nonetheless it is pretty freaking awesome and let's talk about night mode as well because that is a definitely a game changer for iphone all around i think night mode works exceptionally well and i i just there's really not much more to say about it 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 does and I hate to use this phrase, just work. Obviously night mode is amazing, especially when you compare it to stuff that the iPhone XS would spit out. The 11 Pro definitely does it good. Um, if you wanna see some of the full resolution images that I shot with the iPhone 11 Pro, I will definitely be sure to leave a link in the description for you to a gallery where you can do so. But overall, fantastic camera here. One thing I do happen to really like about this phone here is the fact that we have 4K video on the front facing camera. like. I think that that's awesome. We finally can shoot 4K video on the front camera, so you don't have to, you know, use the backside if you don't want to, and you still get that same quality. Along with that, we do have slow motion video on the front camera as well. It's it's not something that I've really felt the urge to take advantage of. Hmm. I should take a slow fee. First of all, slow fee, no. Second, okay, it's pretty cool, but I, it's just not something that I'm drawn to. So let's talk about a couple of things surrounding the front of the phone. First off, Face ID is improved, and that is not an exaggeration. Like, Face ID is stupid fast. I will take Face ID on the iPhone 11 Pro over any fingerprint sensor, any day, all day, even Touch ID. It just, it puts everything to shame. I, the thing is instant, like literally, instantaneous and you're not sacrificing the security as well because it is I think more secure than a lot of other face ID captures on other phones but that is a whole different thing to talk about we also do have an update to the display here now this is a 6.5 inch display and it's pretty awesome it has a resolution of 2426 by 1125 and it also features a 2 million to 1 contrast ratio it has 800 nits of brightness and 1200 nits of brightness for HDR it's just pretty dang awesome all around. Now, one thing I did notice, and obviously I knew about this in Keynote, but using it day to day, right? There's no 3D touch anymore. That is rest in peace, that is gone. But we do have haptic touch like we saw on the iPhone XR. And it turns out that it's, I mean, more or less it's just as good. Like I use 3D touch for little things here and there. And the places that I do use it, I didn't notice really too much of a difference not having it there. It was one of the reasons why I continued to use the XS Max over the XR because I did like some of those things. But 
it, it just, it works fine in my opinion. Now let's talk about the design here for a second. Uh, some people are like, oh, I don't like the camera thing or it doesn't look different enough. I think that it's pretty cool. I mean, I really, really, really do like the textured matte finish on the back. I think that is a very classy touch and I, I've, I've liked it on other phones before. It looks exceptional on the iPhone as well. I think it's good all around. But real quick, while we're talking about design, I wanna give a shout out to ESR for sponsoring the channel. Uh, I talked about this case in my previous cases and accessories video. This is the Mimic tempered glass case. Yes, there's tempered glass on the back of this case and we have a rubber bumper around the sides. And it just, it gives you a premium feel like in your hand with the glass on your fingers, you know, I think it makes a difference. And then also we have the rubber bumper to add some grip to that as well. I do also have their screen protector on here as well. Honestly, both of these are must have pickups. If you have an iPhone 11, 11 Pro or 11 Pro Max, I will leave a link below for you if you wanna check out this case or the screen protector for yourself. So let's talk about the performance, right? And we have the A13 Bionic chip inside of here. I mean, obviously when you first take a phone out of the box, especially an iPhone for the first while, it's pretty dang fast. I mean, it, this is a fast chip. There's little things that are happening in the background that you'll never fully comprehend or grasp because it's happening without you knowing that uses the performance in this chip. But on the other side of that, I mean, I'll take a faster chip, right? Like that's, that's okay with me, but I think I'm gonna have to kind of look at this long-term and see how that works out. Now, in terms of performance, when it relates to battery life, I think that you're getting the best of both worlds here. Stupid fast phone and also very, very good battery life. Like this definitely far outlasts my iPhone 10s max like without a doubt i i definitely think that this is a winner all around in the battery life department with that battery life i mean apple actually did a bold thing this year they made the phone a little bit thicker to put a bigger battery inside of it like thank you whoever out there is listening because i will take a thicker phone with a bigger battery all day long now when it comes to recharging that battery oh my goodness Oh my, they finally included a fast charger in the box. It's about damn time, right? We have the 18 watt uh, USB type C wall charger that you actually get with the iPad Pro. And also you get the USB type C to lightning cable. So you can actually fast charge this thing, which is awesome. Like finally, I'm so happy about that, uh, but uh, it's definitely something we should have had quite a while ago. Now I picked up the 256 gigabyte model of the 11 Pro Max. I'm kind of shocked that they actually sell a 64 gigabyte version of this phone, especially since, you know, Phil Schiller was on stage saying pro like we were having a drinking game going on. But <laughs> I don't know, I picked up the 256 version because I looked at my 10s Max and I was like 81 gigabytes of storage. So I was in that awkward spot where 128 would make sense, but 64 doesn't. Someday when they put micro SD card expansion in the iPhone, uh, the, the heavens will rise and all the people will sing in a choir of glory. I, I just, <laughs> we finally got the fast charger, right? Now, aside from, you know, all the hardware upgrades that we have here, we got a new camera, we got a better display, we have uh, a nice matte finish on the back, we got a fast charger in the box, things like that. I think that one of the more noticeable feature upgrades to this phone is not actually an upgrade to this phone, it's an upgrade to a lot of phones. I like iOS 13 a lot. Now I'm not gonna make this a video about iOS 13 and how great it is, but there are a lot of features included in that. And if you haven't seen some of the new features with iOS 13, I will leave my video linked below for you, but it's got a lot going on. I mean, it definitely makes the phone a better phone. Like you could upgrade your 10s Max to iOS 13 and have a very, very similar experience. Maybe not the ultra wide angle, maybe not the battery life, etc. but iOS 13 is a big part of the iPhone 11 Pro. But here's the thing with the Pro name, and this goes for any phone that's added Pro to their name. When I buy a piece of Pro equipment, like the camera I'm shooting on right now, I definitely plan to keep it around for, for a while, you know? Uh, three to five years, maybe something like that, until something substantially better comes along. But Apple and all these other companies, they push out phones every year. So is the next phone gonna be Pro-er? than this one. I mean, we're not talking about pro equipment. We're talking about a label that's put on a phone that makes it more desirable, I guess, to, to the general public. It's the 11 Pro, not the 11. It's better than the 11 because it's pro, right? The whole pro thing kind of, 
it's just getting a little tiring at the end of the day. But I don't know, I wanna know what you think about the iPhone 11 Pro or 11 Pro Max in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, leave it a thumbs up. And also if you're new around here, subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when new videos like this drop in the future. So thank you so much for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. This is Dom and I will catch you in the next video.